Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tal Flater Mouse. A few months ago we posted a video with these aluminum turbine slugs. Since so many people believe that putting spiral fluting on a projectile would cause it to spin and fly stable, a machinist named Tim decided to make these rounds and see what would happen. And since they didn't work, a lot of people chimed in and told us why they didn't work or what would make them work. And a surprising number of people don't know there's two pronunciations for turbine. 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 With the important stuff out of the way, let's get on with the testing. With a completely different design, Tim was able to prove that you could make a, a very light projectile yeah. out of aluminum that flew at very high speeds and was very stable in flight and accurate. Now Tim has been reading the comments on the aluminum turbine video and is going to try to implement as many of the most common design improvements that people have left. The most obvious change is he's using brass instead of aluminum and he also moved the spirals up towards the nose. And then finally he counterboard it using a taper shape and what this does is make the tail very light and the nose very heavy so it acts like a shuttlecock. These rounds are very big and very heavy. We normally max out at one ounce, so in this case we had to use some high brass rounds designed to shoot this kind of weight. This is how we loaded it. We put the gas piston in there, which is a gas seal. On top of that, two rubber discs. Without that, the gas piston would just be shoved up into the cavity of the round. We then add a thin Teflon disc, which again supports the round, and finally we add a couple shims which just holds the round into the shell snugly. Now the moment of truth we'll see how these things shoot. Chet loads the round into the Benelli Nova which has a much longer barrel than the Mossberg that we were using before. Oh. The first shot was a miss but this also gives us some valuable information. The round continues on for over a hundred yards, splashes behind there, but it never stabilizes. And a lot of people believe that a round will eventually stabilize if you give it enough time. The round does exit the barrel flying straight, and then it begins turning and flying sideways. And that's no small piece of wood. It's about 24 inches tall and 12 inches wide and that's a pretty large target from that distance. There you go. I ripped that thing a new one. The second shot, we had a little better luck and we were lucky enough to be able to recover this round and it was just stuck right in the wood like that. But as you can see, it entered the wood sideways, which is called a keyhole. We had planned to shoot at other targets besides this block of wood, like some ballistic gel, some water jugs, and stuff like that. But because we were having such problems hitting the target at even this close range, we decided just to continue shooting at this block of wood. But you could still learn a lot by seeing how the round impacts the wood. And we knew that because the rounds were keyholing, we weren't dealing with an accurate round. We decided to move the target 10 yards closer to ensure more hits. <laughs> One thing that I've learned about Tim and his machine work is that he uses extremely tight tolerances. If he gives you five rounds, they are exactly the same, the same weight, dimensions, everything. So needless to say, the flight characteristics are also the same. And unfortunately in this case, none of them work. <laughs> it went to the left. Hey, look at it. Look at Skip. Yeah. Now, since the first three rounds were all hitting to the right, we decided, hey, let's aim a little to the left and see if we can compensate. And that's always a mistake because you can never predict 
which way a wonky round like that is going to fly. And instead of aiming at the X, he was aiming at the yellow piece of tape off to the left. And once again, you can see the round started flying straight for the first 15 yards or so, and then just started tumbling. And it flew out about 150 yards out in that field. Aim at the center, so go for it. And once again, the round key hold. And that's a pretty hefty piece of wood. It's about three and a half inches thick. And despite going through that wood sideways, it almost made it all the way through. And you gotta give Tim credit for trying the viewer's ideas because you never know what's gonna work and won't work. You can, we could talk about it and argue about it in the comment section, but when you actually see what happens, that's a different story. Still, we had a lot of fun making this video, and I want to thank Tim for supplying these rounds to us. Now, I hear what you're saying. We should have shot him out of a rifle shotgun. Well, luckily, Tim shot him out of a rifle shotgun, so click here to see the results. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.